my heart and I do want to come out with my uh, text on today and the text is don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Just don't give up on God, meaning don't, don't give up on faith in God. Don't give up on having faith in God. Don't give up on God. Amen. And I also want to say also, don't quit. Fight the good fight of faith. But my text is, don't give up on God. Amen? Amen. And let's go to, I'm going to go to the scriptures. I want to uh, lay some foundation, some groundwork here. It's because we're, we're in a time of life to where, um, to where everything is coming and is happening, can happen, is happening, will happen. Mm -hmm. And because of that, as, as people of God, we have to study, look to the hill from which coming thy help. I mean, we got to study, look to God, look to his word, look to what he said, you know, yesterday, look to what he said the day before yesterday, look to what he said today, look to what God is saying because first of all, he's God and he changed not. Amen. So we have to always study, ponder, and start to recall back to remembrance what God has said, first of all, from the beginning, in the middle, and even now. Amen? Amen. And because God is faithful to his word, he cannot deny himself. He will not do that. He will not deny himself at all. In other words... When God put his word out there, he's not going to deny his word to not keep it. God does not count uh, his word short and slack because, first of all, he is the spirit of truth. He is the spirit of righteousness. He is the spirit of sound judgment. He is the spirit of yea and amen because that's who he is. Amen? amen. I want to come out because I want us to understand that the more trials that we have, the more difficulties that we have in, our, in, in, in life, the more difficulties that we are having, uh, even with people, even on our jobs, even when it comes to the working of the ministry. And yes, it's joy, peace, and happiness in it, but there, there comes a great trying of our faith in the midst of everything that we're going through in life. The Bible tells us that they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Amen. Amen. Now, that we ain't going to get out of that. That word ain't going to wipe off the face of the Bible. Because if we're living godly, persecution is going to come. So there is persecution without, there is persecution within. So we have the enemy within afflicting us with thorns and thistles in our mind. And what are those thorns and thistles? Those are words of doubt, unbelief, uncertainty. He brings to us so that why? We can be able to give up and he wants to choke the word of God out of our mind. Amen. Amen. That's where he wants to do it at. He wants to choke it out of our mind. Not out of our feelings. Because our feelings are emotions. And they deal with, you know, feelings could be up today, down tomorrow, up today. So it'd be way great. So he's not trying to choke it out of our feelings. He's trying to choke the word of God out of our mind so that we can give into our feelings. Because feelings start dictating to whether or not I want to do it, don't want to do it, don't feel like doing it, should I do it, I don't have to do it. So what he wants to do, he wants to choke the word of faith and then start us to walking in our feelings. Amen? Amen. Let's go over here to Hebrews uh, uh, chapter 11, verse 6. That's going to be my ground running uh, floor when it comes to the text. That's the ground that we're going to start walking in and walking on. It's Hebrews 11, uh, chapter 6, verse 6. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11 and then verse 6. And we want to be encouraged as a people of God to continue to trust God. We need to know when we are actually giving up on God. We need to know that too. And we're going to see when we're actually giving up on God. And, we, and sometimes we're giving up on God and we don't even know we're giving up on God. Amen? Amen. Verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. First of all, when we come to God, and we come to God on a daily basis, and as we come to God, first of all, we got to believe, first of all, that he is what? That he is the I am. Wow. That he is 
El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. We got to come to him believing that whatever we come to God about according to his will, no matter what it is, that he is more than sufficient and have more than sufficient enough to supply our need and our petition. That's right. So we got to believe that he is God all by himself and by himself he swears. He's saying there's no other and there's no other greater than me. I don't know nobody else I can swear by but by me. Amen. Amen. So he's just that solid. So he says we got to believe that he is, first of all, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In other words, we got to believe that when we come to God in faith, that if we come to him diligently, diligently does not mean this morning and now I'm through seeking you, God. It don't mean this evening and now I'm through seeking you, God. It don't mean on Tuesday, okay, God, now, now I don't need you Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Diligently seeking God means acknowledging God in all our ways so that he will direct our path. Amen. Amen. That's the diligence. And when you say all our ways, now check out what the author says, all our ways. In all your ways, acknowledge him. In other words, in everything we go to do, whichever way we go to turn or think about turning or doing, we should acknowledge God first. Every thought that comes to our mind, we need to examine it in light of the word of God. We need to examine thoughts. We need to examine vision. We need to examine ideas. How? In light of God's word. Because why? This is acknowledging God in all our ways. Amen. Amen. This is diligently seeking him consistently without giving up. And we seek God until he reward us. And the reward is not the way we always think the reward is going to be. Sometimes God will reward us just with his peace in a greater way. Amen. Because peace is what we need so we can continue to hear from God. And the peace of God which guards our heart and mind shields us from everything else that we don't have an understanding about or uh, even the knowledge of. Amen. So that's very important. Now, Let's look at here, and, and I want to and I want to jump down to here, and, and let's hear when it comes talks about because that's why now we can't give up on God. So first of all, we got to have faith, and what is faith? Faith is not what we see, it's not what we have, it's not what we don't have, it's not what we. It, it ain't got nothing to do with anything temporal. Faith in God is substance that is built. In our hearts and mind upon the word of God. Amen. Amen. Faith in God is substance and evidence of the faith that we have in God when he has answered our prayer. That's substance. Amen. Amen. That's substance. Because first of all, we came to him and then he rewarded us for what? Having faith in him. Amen. And so that substance caused our faith to be built. Mean in other words, that answer prayer causes the faith of God to be built up stronger in our hearts and minds. And now when we come to him, we should not be doubting anymore. Amen. And yes, we do doubt from time to time, but if we were to reach and catch a hope to the substance, mean the ingredients that first formed our faith, <laughs> and then mixed it all together, first of all, his word is one of the ingredients. Prayer is the other ingredients. Uh, the prayer of the righteous, those that have prayed for us, is another ingredient. The Holy Ghost is the other ingredient. And then when we see that, that, that God has actually answered our prayers, that's another ingredient. Amen. All of this builds substance for sure faith in God. Amen? Amen. Now, let, let's, let's go here. Let, let's go to James uh, chapter 1, and let's start at verse 3. Because, you know, sometimes... Uh, you know, we sit and then we begin to wonder as we go through life, as we go through life. Now, let, 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 let's, let's, let's say this here. When we go through life, there are elementary stages of life. There are infancy stages of life. There's the in-between stages of life. And then there's that level of where there's another level of maturity of life. None of those areas function the same. 
we can't even function the same in any of those areas. Mm -hmm. And guess what? We can't even expect the same results in any of those areas. Because as infancy, like a baby, I, my mother had to hold me and my mother had to feed me and my mother had to make sure my mouth was guided towards the bottle and my mother had to make sure that she put the spoon in my mouth and I opened it up uh, so I could receive the food that she was giving me. My mother had to do that. My mother had to change my diapers. My mother had to do that. My mother had to teach me uh, 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 after she changed my diaper, uh, uh, okay, now I don't have to change it. Now you're big enough to where you can go sit on what we call the potty when we tell the children. So now I'm sitting on the potty. What am I supposed to do on the potty, Mom? Well, that what you did in your diaper that I changed, now you need to do it in the potty. So in other words, Mother had to walk me through every stage of infancy in life to wean me from what she was normally doing for me. And now I have to do it myself. That's how God deals with us when it comes to faith. Because you go from faith to faith. So God, in our first stage of, uh, of as, 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 as baby saints, he began to give us some milk of the word. He began to give us, uh, uh, you know, some things that uh, we ask for just immediately. And then, you know, we don't have to pray long prayers. And, and then he just answered right then. And then we look up and sometimes God, we go to thinking about some things. He just immediately give it to us, immediately do it for us. He brings about some clarity real immediately in his word. And so he does that. Amen. And then now, that's our infancy stage. Now we done jumped over here, now to what you call that middle stage of life. That's when you're between 12 years old, <laughs> right before you cross over the threshold to become 13. Because now at the age of 12, I'm in between two. I'm between coming out of the infancy stage, and I'm getting ready to almost get ready to cross over into the adult stage of life. So now I'm in between the stages. And in between the stages is where we get confused at. <laughs> we get confused. I'm going to tell you why. Because now we're, we're, we're trying to stop thinking and acting like we did 11 years ago. Amen. We still trying to stop thinking and expecting certain things out of people and certain ways out of mom and dad to do for us that we did 11 years ago. So now we got to reach up a little higher and start doing some things ourselves. That mom and dad don't have to tell us again and again and again and again. Amen. So now I, I, I'm rocking here because now I got to grow up. And I'm realizing at 12, I'm no longer 11 on and beyond beyond that. Now I'm looking at, okay, 12, I'm getting ready to turn 13. And this is a different, this is a different part of life that I have not experienced. Amen. When we're over here in faith, that means that even in life, we are being tried when it comes to growing from babies to adults. It works the same way with God, the trying of our faith. Look what Brother James says over here in James chapter 1. And starting at verse 3. Well, I want to start at verse 2. He says, my brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Mean, get excited, be happy. No, that don't make sense, but do it anyway. Do it anyway. When you are falling into diverse temptations, when, when you're being tempted to give up on life, to give up on God, to give up on one another, to give up on your marriage, to give up on business, to give up on vision, to give up on children, to give up on different things. When you're being tempted, you know, to step out of character that, that God has placed you in when it comes to the character of Christ, when you're being tempted in all these different areas, he says, first of all, count it out joy. Amen. When you fall into diverse temptations, that means many temptations on every hand. Count it out joy. He says, because first of all, in verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. When you no longer have the means to provide and to do certain things that you like to do for your family and then for, other, for others and even sometimes for the ministry, he says, count it all joy. 
Because why? Now your faith is being tried. Why? Because it's working patience in you Amen. to wait on God. Amen. It's waiting, it's working patience in you and in me to trust God. Amen. It's working patience in you to first of all not try to seek your own way, not try to make your own way, but it's working patience in you to wait upon God. Amen. Amen. It's working patiently. You ask where are you go run and get a loan and use every debit or credit card you got to provide for yourself. Every credit card, every lender, you go borrow from Sue, Sally, Sam, everybody in the church. He says, now this is working patience for you to wait upon God. Amen. Amen. You need to wait upon God because the word says, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. So if I believe that word, now I got to have patience for that word to come about. Amen. Amen. 